Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. Post uh, Breeders' Cup, the year is coming to a conclusion. Yeah, 14 races at Keeneland. Uh, once again, I'd say it's, it was a pretty successful. There, there were issues, but a pretty successful Breeders' Cup at Keeneland. Beautiful track in Lexington, Kentucky. Matt, real quick, Mischief Magic, Wonder Wheel, Meditate, Forte, Victoria Road, Goodnight Olive, Caraval, Cody's Wish, Tuesday, Modern Games, Malathot, Rebels Romance, and of course, Flight Nine are 14 winners. Congratulations to all of them. Matt, but let's start at the top, and the top has to be flight line. There is a lot. There is a lot to talk about here with flight line. First off, uh, the race, uh, I, I guess it went off pretty much as we thought it would. Yeah, I, I yeah, even too extreme, Brian. Uh, uh, it, it certainly went as uh, as we thought it would with uh, life is good uh, going to the lead. Uh, I don't know if I expected life is good to be to to go to the lead at such a rapid pace and for them to pull away from the rest of the field. And there were other circumstances involved with that uh, as significantly as they did and that it would, you know, for uh, most of the mile and a quarter that it would be so uh two-sided a race um, in the beginning, but yeah, it, it sure played out the way we thought. Yeah, absolutely. And and I real quick, kudos to Life is Good, uh, the connections of Life is Good for taking a shot. Um, we worried about him at a mile and a quarter. And, you know, they they his race is to go to the lead. And first it looked like he ran 107 and changed, but of course that was an error and came back as 109 and one, which is just still extremely fast for a mile and a quarter race. But flight line was always right behind him, hounding him, cruising along, ready to take that lead. And without life is good, it, it wouldn't have been quite the same for flight line as far as showing just what he could do. Matt, uh, a great career, a short career, lots of mixed emotions here. On the one hand, I'm happy that I got to see a horse of flight line, a horse that I believe is the most talented horse that we've seen in a long, long time. But on the other hand, it, it leaves you wanting six career races, three as a three-year-old, three as a four-year-old, the retirement came quick. Yeah, it sure did. And, you know, and with that, there are certainly circumstances, um, you know, if he hadn't gotten, uh, uh, taken the fall and, and gotten the big, uh, injury uh, and on his rear end the the big cut that delayed his uh you know uh, initial start on the track and and some other little things would we maybe have seen more uh starts from flight line maybe would he maybe have run earlier and been part of the triple crown i don't know maybe but you know all of those things are it's it's just what happened and and we ended up with uh, with six starts in the career for flight line. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm looking at the retirement two ways. First of all, this horse is worth so much money, ridiculous money. That's that's part of maybe what's wrong with the sport, how much money flight line is worth at stud. I mean, he's likely to uh, uh, collect about $40 million in stud fees next year, and that's that's crazy. And it, it it's hard to want to put a horse like that at any risk on the racetrack. But on the other hand, you know, a lot of these owners really don't have money issues and it would be nice to see flight line. They, they kind of uh, intimated that, you know, he would return next year. And, and of course that was quickly pulled out from under us when he ran such a big breeders cup classic. And it was such a breeders cup, big breeders cup classic, like all six of his performance, just an awesome, awesome, racehorse again i i don't know that i've seen a horse as good as flight line since maybe going all the way back to spectacular bid i'm not ready to call him as good as spectacular bid yet but uh, that that was slightly over 40 years ago so i'm i'm saying a lot about flight line uh um 
flight line is the best dirt horse I've seen in a long time, Matt. And um, the value, he was sold an uh, interest, 2.5% uh, uh, interest was sold the other day for $4.6 million, uh, which I guess if you do the math, that uh, values him at approximately $184 million. No horse is worth $184 million, but if he can earn that in his first, oh, I don't know, five years of stud, seems like that's not such a bad price. Yeah, it you know the way things work, he's gonna earn back a you know a significant significant amount of that money before any of his horses ever get on the track to race uh, uh, with uh, the stud fees that they collect, and then you know uh, for the uh, breeders that have a, a a share in flight line selling those first. Uh, first yearlings the first couple years you know yeah there's gonna be quite a money grab yeah exactly uh kudos to olympiad who had a wonderful wonderful yeah. year six wins and eight starts and he was able to get second it was slightly more than eight lengths back to olympiad but a big performance for the uh, uh son of spites town who uh, proved to be one of the best older horses in the country yet again with his second in the breeders cup classic a big story coming out of the classic though of course unfortunately was the injury of epicenter uh a fractured bone for epicenter uh was pulled up on the back stretch that's why the six for a long time was uh, at first uh, uh erroneous but uh, it looks like so far you know we're we're not far removed from all this but it looks like the surgery went as well as could be hoped and epicenter is doing pretty well. Yes. Yeah, so it seems. And, and as it turns out, it was a, a very, very serious um, uh, injury, uh, but you know, an injury without, you know, uh, shattering of the bone, but a significant break, but the surgery apparently went really, really well. And he's been a uh, excellent patient and uh, uh seems like he's on his way to uh recovering yeah that's the most important thing uh epicenter a, a wonderful horse and a horse i think will be named three world champion at the end of the year uh so we wish him uh, all the best in his recovery and for his connections matt uh, i'm disappointed flight lines retired i'm not uh i'm not surprised but um again i'm glad that we got to see at least six races from from a very special son of tappet Speaking of special horses, Matt, uh, the maybe the polar opposite of Flightline winning his six races by seventy some odd lengths is is good old Malathot, and and neither of us, uh, to to be fair, neither of us made Malathot our top pick, the second choice in the Breeders' Cup this time, and that was a mistake because Malathot did it again. It wasn't uh, it wasn't easy as it often is for Malathot, but she knows how to get to the wire, and this was maybe the best example of her whole 14 race career. It's a 14 race career, which is now over, but she got up in the last jump mat to beat two other good older mares, Clarier and uh, Blue Stripe, uh, who both ran big races, but it was Malathot. Yeah, it, it was really quintessential uh, Malathot uh, in the disc staff, Brian, because boy, coming down the stretch, I don't know, <laughs> maybe out of all of these late, stretch drives by Malathot. This was one where I was like, oh geez, I don't I don't think she's gonna get there uh this time because clearly Blue Stripe was running well and and uh but boy she dug in again and and did just enough to get the win. But that that has been her way throughout. Not brilliant, not you know uh, uh it is her stretch runs are exciting in that grinding kind of way as you watch, like, is she going to get there? Is she not going to get there? But uh, kudos to uh, Todd Pletcher for the handling of this horse. Uh, 14 starts in the money every single time. 10 wins, you know, uh, just a fantastic career for uh, Malathot. Daughter of Curlin, Dreaming of Julia, marvelous, marvelous uh, breeding. Yeah, she's been good all the way, even when uh, back when she was a two-year-old, running as a two-year-old uh, late in the year in New York. Malathot was a really, really good horse. 
She wasn't a champion at two because she came around too late that year, but she was a champion at three. She was a champion at four. Speaking about that phenomenal record, the only time she was worse than second was one of her best races when she was third by half a length in the Breeders' Cup uh, to staff as a three-year-old out at Del Mar. Uh, Nest was a disappointment. Nest was there. Maybe she didn't have the best run in the world, but she was only fourth best. Uh, big performance by Blue Stripe, my top long shot uh, given out on Horse Center here. And Clarier coming up the rail. Three noses at the wire, Matt. Clarier has lost two Breeders' Cup distaffs now by a total of less than a length. Yeah, and that was a pretty darn good effort coming off the layoff and that injury that uh, she sustained in the starting gate uh, uh, earlier in the summer. So for Steve Asmussen to have her at the top of her game in, and that kind of effort was a fantastic training job by him. I don't know. I've, have you heard any plans about her for uh, racing next year? Actually, I've not heard Clarier. I have heard Malafat's retired. We're saying goodbye to Malafat on the racetrack, but I have not heard from Clarier. Clarier, beautifully bred as well. So I would suspect that there's a good chance she might be retired as well, but I have not heard yet, Matt. All right, that's the distop. We want to talk about another race looking ahead to the future a little bit. And that, of course, happened on Friday, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Matt, neither of us were on Forte as well. <laughs> we were both on flight line, by the way. Hey, we were both on flight line. Neither of us were on Malafat and Forte. Uh, three, there are three uh, uh, focus horses here, but uh, Forte kept surprising me. He he ran kind of a dull race in the Sanford after a nice win. And uh, uh, since that loss in the Sanford where he was fourth, he's been very impressive winning the hopeful. The Breeders' Futurity Loggins gave him everything he wanted, but then he was even better coming from off the pace to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, and we, jo we joked about it during the show uh, uh, last week, our last Breeders' Cup show. Uh, uh, I know I joked about the fact that, like, the viewers were probably thinking, what's the matter with Matt? He's not picking... Uh, He's not picking Forte. He's not picking Todd Pletcher in uh, in the race. And I guess I should have listened to myself making fun of myself uh, uh, before the race. Um, well, I, I think you did end up on Todd Pletcher, just just a longer shot. Yeah, well, you are right, Brian. I did end up on Lost Ark, uh, a longer shot in there. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I should have uh, I heated a little bit more because – Pre-race, I'm telling you, Brian, I thought that uh, Cave Rock looked absolutely terrible on the racetrack. He was really keyed up, expending a lot of energy, but not in a positive kind of way. I, I thought that he was, uh, I don't know, nervous is the right word, but he did not seem focused in a positive way with all that energy, um, and, and, and I and watching the post parade, I did not expect him to run well. And, and I guess I should have uh, uh, turned to uh, Forte as my top choice in the actual betting. But that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you, uh, you, you, you basically took the words out of my mouth. I actually told my friends that I was with that uh, Cape Rock doesn't, just doesn't look good before no. the race. So maybe that's saying something that he ran second. I actually canceled uh, some um, uh, wagers that went over multiple races that included Cave Rock that I, I still could cancel because I really did not like his looks pre-race. He was second, but uh, Forte was clearly best. Forte was very good. Forte is going to be the two-year-old champion. Forte is going to be the early Kentucky Derby favorite, a son of violence. Uh, blame, there, there's distance certainly on, on the female side. Blame, mm -hmm. he looked a little bit like Blame the way he was finishing off this race. Queen Caroline wasn't a, a, a standout by any means, but she was a a stakes horse of, of multiple years. So that may speak to Forte's hardiness and Forte's ability uh, to withstand rigors of, say, a Triple Crown run next year. Forte, very good two-year-old. I think Matt and I both underestimated him a little bit. A lot, I think a lot of people did coming out of that Breeders' Futurity where, where a lot of people thought Loggins might be the best horse in that race, in that particular race. But I think Forte, again, moved forward with the race over the track at Keeneland and uh, an impressive win for the Ripoli gang. 
Uh, Mike, uh, certainly Todd Pletcher uh, had, had a good uh, Breeders' Cup again, as we just talked about Malathot and Forte, Matt. A lot of other stories to talk about uh, on Breeders' Cup uh, weekend. I want to talk about the European turf domination. Um, kind of started, it, I, I guess she wasn't the first winner, but uh, it started with Meditate. I thought Meditate was just uh, 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 sensational. She might have been the easiest winner of the whole Breeders' Cup uh, weekend other than Flightline. Um, uh, she had run against classy, classy horses over in Europe, her trainer, Aidan O'Brien. And of course, Aiden O'Brien, as we found out, would have a big weekend as well. Charlie Appleby probably had an even bigger weekend. Uh, we saw uh, Tuesday uh, impressively win again for Aiden O'Brien on Saturday, but Charlie Appleby won three total, led by Rebels Romance and Modern Games, Matt, and uh, he was close in, in a couple others. Charlie Appleby could have had five. So grand total, grand scoreboard here. Six out of seven turf races for the Europeans. Yeah, Brian, that was just uh, just an amazing uh, domination by the European horses. To to your recollection, is that the best performance by in, in terms of numbers of numbers of wins uh, for the Europeans in since the uh, uh, expansion of the the Breeders' Cup into the two days and the fourteen races? Yes, the answer is yes to my recollection. Um, I, I wasn't ready for that question, but I am pretty darn certain, Matt, that uh, the Europeans have never won six before six European turf or six Breeders' Cup turf races. So yeah, um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Godolphin too, because I, I I thought they were best, and it'll be interesting to see in, in a division with no American standout whatsoever. It'll be interesting yeah. to see who is the male turf horse of the year uh modern games did what we've come to expect he had that big burst of speed he was well back in between horses kind of pinballing around a little early but when asked he uh, he moved well outside and had that explosive burst modern games probably i would say is the favorite yes. to win the eclipse award oh yeah absolutely brian especially uh uh when you Couple that with his North American, his other North American win this year in the Woodbine Mile. That gives him two victories in North America. He's not one of the uh, Europeans that comes over for one, you know, one and done kind of horse. And of course, we saw him last year, and that's not supposed to be part of the, you know, influence the Eclipse voting this year. But yeah, with with the lack of anybody else, and I don't mean to diminish uh, uh, Modern Games' his performance, uh, yeah, he looks like he's a, a standout for that Eclipse Award. And yeah, he, he certainly uh, duplicated that burst of speed that we saw in his victory in the Woodbine Mile um, uh, in, the, uh, in his victory in the Mile uh, for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, absolutely. That's two straight Breeders' Cups now. And I and yeah, the, uh, some people ask me, does the Woodbine Mile count to an American Eclipse Award? And I think it certainly does. The North American, the Woodbine uh, Mile grade one was a huge performance. Modern Games. Uh, I've seen people say, well, he's nowhere near the best in Europe. And that's just not true. He was a classic winner at a mile uh, in France. If you look at his mile races, especially, they stand out because his two losses were very good second place finishes on one, a turf course, which he probably didn't love. And another one was to the uh, soon to be horse of the year in Europe by Eid. Modern Games, a three year old son of Dubawi for Charlie Appleby and Godolphin. Uh, we expect to see him back next year in racing. And that probably means a run at a third straight Breeders' Cup next year. Look for him again in the Breeders' Cup Mile, which will be out in Santa Anita next November, Matt. Um, I thought the most impressive turf performance, and he beat my long shot, although there's only two horses I bet in the Breeders' Cup turf, but I thought Rebels Romance was the best horse of the of the turf racing, two days of turf racing on the Breeders' Cup. Uh, there Again, there were people, I, I was shocked he was let go at almost six to one, uh, but there were a lot of people saying, well, that German, those group ones in, in Germany just aren't as good. And, and I think that's a mistake. Year after year, I see horses running in those big mile and a half races at Germany, whether they be Germans or horses coming over. 
And, and those races proved to be key races, whether we're talking about coming over to America or whether we're talking about running in big races later in Europe, uh, like the ARC, uh, a long shot winner last year. Rebels Romance is a four-year-old gelded son of Dubawi for, again, Go Dolphin and, uh, and Charlie Appleby. So we're going to see Rebels Romance certainly come back to the races now, Matt. And he, he, he won on all weather surfaces to start his career. He toyed on dirt. He was a, a winner of a pretty big race on dirt early in his career. He came over for the Belmont before uh, a sickness uh, precluded him from running in the Belmont Stakes last year. Uh, but now five for five on the grass and the way he finished off this mile and a half race, I don't know if anybody in the world was going to beat Rebels Romance in the Breeders' Cup turf. Yeah, that's for sure. And I guess, you know, the biggest factor in all of this, you know, when you, in terms of talking about uh, how those German Group 1 victories rank uh, and, and uh, certainly had, had a factor in the wagering with Rebels Romance going off at, at such high odds is that you know this is a Charlie Appleby uh, horse and and, and uh, uh, that that is significant. This horse uh, you know uh, is extremely talented. Who knows? We'll see what what they do with them. Are they gonna are they gonna go for some of those big uh, 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 big purses in the spring in the Middle East on the dirt? Uh, you know coming up. But um, I hope we get to see Rebels Romance once again, at least uh, in the Breeders' Cup next year. Yeah, I, I think there's a really good chance that we'll have Modern Games and Rebels Romance back to America next year, at least for the Breeders' Cup, maybe for even more races the way that Charlie Appleby loves to raid our big turf races. Matt, there's still lots to talk about in the turf races. Um, first off, the, the, the second injury of the Breeders' Cup happened uh, I guess it happened right out of the starting gate, uh, although yeah. he was pulled up later in the race in the Breeders' Cup mile. And of course, we've talked about domestic spending uh, coming off that gigantic layoff of, a, of 15 plus months, I guess it was, Matt, uh, fractured his uh, pelvic bone um, and they believe it happened right away. And then it just got worse as he went around. Thankfully, he was pulled up early enough where more damage wasn't done. And uh, we're waiting to see how domestic spending does. Yeah, I think from the reports that Chad Brown has put up on Twitter in the last few days, it seems like he's doing well. It's, it is not the kind of injury that a surgery can take care of. It is a, you know, uh, take it easy, stall rest kind of uh, an injury. Um, and, and from the post I think I saw yesterday from Chad that he, he's continuing to do well, be a good patient, take it easy, eating well, uh, moving around, uh, uh, you know, carefully. Uh, he's ready to uh, uh, leave the racetrack and go to a more, you know, uh, 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 tranquil setting on a farm to uh, continue to recover and, and no doubt uh, uh, get ready for retirement. Yeah, yeah, it, it sounds good too, from what I've heard for, for both horses, Epicenter certainly, and domestic spending as well. And of course, uh, domestic spending will be retired, but uh, uh, so far so good in his recovery. It struck me as ironic, maybe I'm being a little bit negative here, but it struck me as ironic that Jack Christopher was the one that was scratched before the Breeders' Cup races uh, for fear of uh, veterinarian scratch and, and Chad Brown's uh, domestic spending ran and then got hurt right away. But anyway, we wish domestic spending very well. Uh, let's talk about the sprinters real quick. Matt Caravelle was another uh, uh, long shot I gave out on Horse Center. Here's my top long shot. She won the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. She was the only American out of seven races to win. I really didn't like her best or, or even second best in there, but she was my top long shot. She paid big money, but I think uh, I think the race was really affected in a, in, in, in a huge way when the assistant starter still had a little bit of hold at Golden Pal, who's probably the best breaking horse I've seen in years, and that was very unfortunate in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Yeah, no doubt, Brian, uh, um, and and uh, much discussion about that, and and people seem to agree, and it sure looked like. Uh, the assistant starter held the horse just just a tiny tiny amount of time, 
But for a horse like Golden Pal that is so dependent on getting out of the gate fast and and leading the way, that 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 was all that it wrote for uh, for Golden Pal. But yeah, Car Caravel is an interesting horse that uh, got off to a fantastic start racing in Maryland for uh, the the trainer uh, the trainer breeder, and then was privately purchased by. A group and sent to um, Graham Motion and and didn't do as well as expected, I guess, with uh, Motion and then was moved to uh, to Brad Cox and and uh, big surprise, big odds. Uh, but when you look back at you know some of the races that the horse ran, you know, uh, <laughs> sure looks like an overlay at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Caraval was good. Uh, unfortunate for Golden Pal, and I, I got the same impression that certainly the starter made a mistake there, the assistant starter, and uh, uh, that affected Golden Pal's chance to win his third straight Breeders' Cup. Speaking about going for his third straight Breeders' Cup match, Jockey's Warrior failed again as the clear favorite uh, for the third straight time. Um, Elite Power. Elite Power is one of these horses that we saw who is uh, putting together, getting better and better and putting together a string of good races. Jackie War Jackie's Warrior did not get to the lead. Super Ocho uh, went out there and Jackie's Warrior still looked comfortable in second, but it wasn't quite his game either. Ran a good race, but Elite Power was better. Yeah, Elite Power. Bill Mott had a fantastic uh uh, Breeders' Cup, a horse that has gotten better and better, that was on a win, win streak, won a race in New York, heading into uh, into the Breeders' Cup, and and was best. Uh, CZ Rock at the eight year old gave you right, gave you that on uh, on Horse Center on our Long Shot show, and was my you know uh, my top pick in that race. Um, didn't quite run the way I expected. I mean, the fit, the result finish was, but was up closer than uh, than expected in the race. Was in third, fourth most of the way, and and uh, looks like could have been a winner in there. And boy, if he had won that race, um, uh, that would have been a really really big uh, outcome for me. I mean, I had the exacta in there, which was which paid very nicely, but uh, um, CZ Rocket, the eight-year-old, ran a big one. Yeah, good pick, Matt. That was your long shot and your top pick, kind of like Stone Age was for me in the turf. Uh, CZ Rocket ran a good race. Elite Power, though, uh, was was best, I thought, and a, a deserving winner. Uh, it'll be interesting. Who, who do you think is going to be the uh, Eclipse Award winner as the sprint? I, I imagine it comes down to Elite Power or Jackie's Warrior. Yeah, I would think it would have to be elite power. Um, the way he, uh, the way he finished the season, and he won, uh, he won the big one. And I think the fact that Jackie's Warrior hasn't done that for a number of years is going to, you know, uh, have an impact on some of the voters. Yeah, and I agree. I think it will go to elite power, but elite power only has two graded stakes wins in his career, two in a row, having won the Vosburgh before, but uh, he won several impressive races in a row and. What have you done for me lately, Jackie's Warrior? Uh, four four graded stakes wins this year, but uh, kind of do expect elite power to get the nod for the Eclipse Award there. Uh, you mentioned Bill Mott having a big Breeders' Cup. Of course, one of the stories was Warlike Goddess, who is the only horse in the Breeders' Cup turf to uh, to threaten complete and utter domination of the Europeans. Uh, she just always runs good races, Matt. Warlike Goddess ran another very good race to be third in that Breeders' Cup. I haven't mentioned Wonder Wheel yet, who uh, uh, was surprising me a little bit, maybe even more so than Forte, or maybe the way she she won oh, yeah. the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, coming off the pace, paint-skimming ride, to say the least, by uh, uh, rider Tyler Gaffleon. She busted through one tiny hole, and she busted through another small hole to rally and win impressively. Wonder Wheel, a very nice uh, Breeders' Cup uh, winner and uh, soon-to-be Eclipse Award winner, Matt. Going back to Bill Mott, Cody's Wish, uh, kind of like uh, 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 Elite Power and kind of like Goodnight Olive, uh, horses who just got better and better. Uh, Goodnight Olive was your your top pick, and she won as the favorite in the Philly and Mare Sprint, leaving no doubts that she's become a champion there. But Cody's Wish is just a really nice story. 
Yeah, absolutely. And certainly the story got played a great deal on uh, NBC and other outlets and, and for, uh, and for good reason, um, I think Godolphin has, you know, handled that uh, whole uh, uh, storyline with a lot of class and and uh, Cody's wish. And like you mentioned, Brian, another one of these horses that just has gotten better and better and better. Uh, a, a, a nice stretch duel uh, in the in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile Cyberknife finishing and had a had a really terrific uh year as a three-year-old yeah absolutely uh getting back to cody's wish uh the, the boy's name is cody foreman and he has a very serious disease that affects every part of his body uh but uh, he was a make-a-wish uh winner uh through keeneland and go dolphin and he uh he met cody's wish as a fall and and, and uh, cody's wish it's a really nice story folks where cody's wish came over to the boy in the wheelchair and, and, and put his hat on him and uh, uh, kind of meant to be in a way, I guess. Uh, any any negative stories in horse racing, you, you hear a story like this, they soon after named the horse after Cody and uh, a great story that he won. And we got to see that unfold at the Breeders' Cup. Cyberknife was uh, too good to lose, Matt. Uh, I guess both of us had Cyberknife as our top pick, if I remember correctly. And, and uh, he ran a heck of a race against the older Cody's Wish. Cyberknife, uh, a very good three-year-old this year. Epicenter gets the award, but Cyberknife ran a lot of good races this year. Matt, I think that's it. I think those are our top stories from everything that happened in the Breeders' Cup at Keeneland. Like I said, I think it was another successful uh, uh, Breeders' Cup at Keeneland. Uh, we both won a little bit of money. We hope our, our, our viewers won some money. That's very important to Matt and I that you guys are are uh, taking everything we say and turning it into some winning tickets. Can I get a party shot from you, my friend? Yeah, sh certainly, Brian. Yeah, it, it 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 was a it was a good uh, it was a good Breeders' Cup. Uh, um, the, the the turf racing was spectacular, and and it will be interesting to see the impact of all those European uh, 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 turf winners on some of the Eclipse Awards, uh, you know, particularly with a horse like Warlike Goddess. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, 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 exciting weekend of racing. Uh, we get a little bit of uh, of quiet heading into Thanksgiving when things uh, gear up again for a few of the big races left in the calendar year and certainly as always i want to thank all of our horse center fans for watching the show good call matt thank thanks to everybody that watches matt and i so appreciate it if you haven't yet subscribe to our youtube channel here at horse racing nation go ahead and do that for us turn those notifications on we appreciate it thanks to candace curtis as always for the help with our cover pages and race graphics thanks to derby wars the best contest site out there Matt, uh, like you said, it's it's a little bit slow, uh, not surprisingly, after Breeders' Cup for a couple weeks. So we wanted to do a recap show here, but also next week we'll be unveiling our first early look, uh, a little less than six months out from the Kentucky Derby. But uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, as well as some of these undercard races of two-year-olds, Matt, got me excited about uh, what might come to be next year. So we'll... Uh, We'll look at the Kentucky Derby next week before getting into the big races. But for now, I say thank you for watching. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.